Welcome back to the Best Wines Media Tasting Room. I'm Kyle Meyer, and with me today is, uh, well, how do I put this? You know, um, it's probably one of the most exciting new wine stories in Spain that I had just got informed on probably about 20, 30 minutes ago. You know, I, I had heard the name of your winery, but mm -hmm. have not had the chance to really taste the wines or get the story behind what you do. Um, Maria Taribo, next to me, winemaker for this fabulous new project. Um, how new? When was it established? Uh, the project started in 2001, but our first vintage was 2008. 2008? Yes. So okay, very so very new. Yes. Now, I want to talk a little bit about where you are mm -hmm. first, okay? Because there's a couple things on the label. There's uh, Costers del Segre, which is, I associate it more with closer to Priorat. Yes, so Costers del Segre is pretty long region, mm -hmm. and it goes, as you say, like from almost the Priora region to up to the Pyrenees. Up to the mountains themselves. Exactly. So we are actually located in the in the Pyrenees, in the Catalan side, at 3,000 feet elevation. Why? 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 That's, Why? A, that's a good question. Yeah, because like, no, well, you, guys, you guys are the only yeah. people out there, right? Pretty we much. were the only ones when we start. Now, now, you know, like everybody wants to copy us. Right, right, <laughs> no, right. There's, there's, yeah. there's more wineries that are coming actually to the Pyrenees to make wine. Uh, but the reason was because Raul Bobet, who who is the owner and also winemaker, mm -hmm. he he was looking for more altitude, like land to plant his vineyards or to make fresher wines. Mm -hmm. And he liked that area because he was from a place closer to there and used to go when he was a kid to the mountains and so he started looking for vineyard and he decided to plant there at 3,000 feet elevation which was pretty unusual when he started the project in 2001. Right. So, but yeah, now it's like more people starting to plant there and mm. the altitude gives us really that freshness and acidity in the wines. So. Now there's, there's an amazing lineup of grape varieties here today. Mm -hmm. So what, was, there, was there no previous history of what was growing there before? Uh, that allows for this amazing well, where, range. Yeah, where we are, I mean, there's like, in the past was some some varietals that used to be planted there, mm -hmm. but uh, to be like ancestral varietals, nobody really knows still which varietals they are, not, you know, the, this uh, history and everything and studies take time to really identify which variety it was, if it was a different one or not. So we decided to plant there like more cold weather varietals, mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, trying to look for that freshness and everything. So yeah, Riesling, Spinot, um, Syrah, Sauvignons. So totally something different than what we're used in Spain. Yeah. And then probably like in the future, we're gonna have like some small lots of like something that was typical yeah. from there in the past or something, but something that it's gonna come, you know, with some muscle selection and stuff. Right, right. So it takes some time. And, right, right, yeah. right. Well, I mean, on the table right now, we have a Sauvignon Blanc Semillon blend, right? Yes. And we have Riesling. With a little bit of Alvarino. With a little Riesling, a little bit of Alvarino. And we have Pinot Noir. Yes. And Syrah. Exactly. And then a Bordeaux blend. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we just ran through the whole lineup. And, uh, you know, in America, we say there's not a dog in the bunch. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Like, everything tasted really good. Can't touch this. Thank you. So, so moving forward, I mean... Is there something that you think is going to end up performing better than something else as time goes on? Or do you think you're going to, oh, you know what I mean? Like for early on, what are you seeing so far? Well, since I know the whites, project? the whites are really, are really good and amazing for us. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's mainly being like a Spanish white. It's, it's really surprising to have whites with really low pH and high acidity, which is going to mm -hmm. allow us to have this wine involved for like 15, 20 years. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Riesling, it's a variety that. Uh, change is amazing in balls, so the complexity and everything, it's going to change a lot. Uh, the Sauvignon Blanc, it's, uh, it's really nice. It has really um, floral aromas, uh, complex. So these two wines are really going to age good. Mm. As well, of course, as the red, that they are like also really fresh and unusual for all our rock fermentation. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, Did, it's a totally uh, unique project. Another question. Yes. Did the, the previous owners of uh, winemaking equipment have anything to do with the decision? Uh, <laughs> well... <laughs> We're going to uh, flash some pictures. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like when we got there, we saw that we had these 12th century rock uh, fermenters that the monks were using. 
back in the 12th century. So Raoul decided to make a trial back in 2008, our first vintage, and see what happened. And, and what happened was that the wine came out amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, we decided to, to ferment every time more there and... We, we, we were tasting with Maria, and she's like, yeah, we have some, you know, stone uh, fermenters. <laughs> and we're like, okay, yeah, cement or concrete vats, or they have eggs, you know, they have the eggs in the winery, some kind of trendy thing. And she showed us the pictures, and I was like, uh, no. Those are, those are rock holes yeah. so, in the friggin' ground. Yeah, and I love that good grape taste. Yeah, so the monks that used to live there, actually, they carved uh, the vats in the, in the rocks. The rocks are made of, like, basically silex which it's pretty mm -hmm. good for the wine it's not calcaric so mm -hmm. the pH doesn't go up mm -hmm. uh, and monks were smart if they did it was for something <laughs> probably by then because it was safer to drink wine than water would right you know but but yeah I mean they, they work amazing and actually they, they they are built gravity flow so in two levels so they they were already using it like as it's I mean, a real nothing, operating yeah, winery. So it's, it's nothing that we are inventing right now. Like yeah. all the winers want to work yeah. gravity flow. They already did it. Like they had like two, two holes, one on top of the other one. And then supposedly the one in the top, they used to smash the grapes and mm -hmm. the use would go down and ferment there. So. And the early results that you're seeing mm -hmm. is it works. Yes, it does work. It, it helps us a lot with giving, you know, like we, it's like Raul always says that it's like cooking or like painting. So... Mm -hmm. Uh, you have different colors of the same painter, and mm -hmm. then once you have more colors, you can make like a nicer painter. Or right, like, right, right, right. Like, Instead of just black and white. Yeah, so so that's what we do. We ferment in these stones, but we, of course, we also have a white area. We ferment in a stainless steel, and uh, we use the wood. Mm -hmm. So we try to to have like a bigger portfolio of, of things to, to be able to blend the wines better and make something more complex and aromatic. So Your Bordeaux blend was completely fermented in those stones, right? Yes. Yeah, that's the wine that we make 100% fermented in the stones. It's also, of course, 100% natural yeast. Everything that yeah. we ferment in the stones, it's, it's of course, natural yeast. And, and yeah, it gives us, like, really earthiness, like, I would say, like, uh, undergrowth forest, you mm. know, when it rains, aromas. So, so cool. <laughs> now, and the, the juice, after it's fermented in the, in the like, on the rocks, um, it ends up going into, but, you know, high-end French oak barrels, right? Is yes. that the, yeah. Yeah, so everything that is fermented in the stunt, we, uh, we take it carefully, the wine already, we take mm -hmm. it to the winery, put it in barrels, uh, everything else that is remaining, there are the skins and the grapes itself, we take them also in little cases to the winery, press them, and then uh, we don't use the press fraction for our wines, but we sell it, so we still get a little bit more of that. And, and yeah, like everything goes 100% malolactic already in barrel, in French oak barrel, normally in around 60% new and stays there for like around 16, 18 months. Is this like the funnest winemaking job for you? Well, that I know, yeah. I mean, when I <laughs> when I first stepped in this uh, winery, it was just the starting of the winery and, yeah. and, and I just fell in love. Not only because of the region, the landscape is amazing, the vineyards yeah. are really pretty, but the project itself and, and being able to work with Raul Bobet, who has like 20 years experience in the industry. So. Yeah. So that that was amazing, and it's and it's really fun. I mean, it's really hard to work in the way. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can imagine like carrying all the cases to the mountain to fill up <laughs> some stone, but but it's something just incredible and that you don't see anywhere else. So, yeah. well, the wine the wines for such a new project. Okay, here's what you have to understand: with everything going on, new area, these mm -hmm. fermentation techniques, brand new grape varieties, new vineyards, the wines are re remarkable. Um, they are so good. For a project that is so new. Well, the project is new, the area is new, but Raul has a lot of experience. Right. He was technical director of Torres Group, which is mm. the biggest group in Spain for mm. in almost 20 years. And then he has another project also in the Priorat, uh, which is called Ferre Bovet, yeah. where he already works with Grenache yeah. and Carignan. So he has a lot of experience, not only in the Priorat, but in the Pernades and all regions all over Spain, I would say, working with Torres when he was before. So, and I mean, but he still, knew what he was doing when he, he decided he, to, to plan you know, here. He He's knew, a smart guy. <laughs> He's a smart guy, but a lot of things have to go the right way yeah. to make wines this good, this early. I mean, this wine's beautiful and seamless and not mm -hmm. over the top, not heavy, but completely ripe, mm -hmm. very pure. 
for for young vines and for stone fermenters yeah, and, it's, and, and for it's, it's just the starting it's what you say so like it, we need time also to learn about our weather and about our vineyards and it's it's gonna take us time to do everything like you know like perfect that means that we have a lot to improve yeah which is it's nice uh, but being already at this level for being like such a giant project it's yeah it's it's really it's really nice you know what, ma'am, thank you for coming and sharing thank with us one of the most exciting new winemaking projects in Spain. And believe me, there's a lot of new exciting stuff in Spain. Uh, but this this might just take the cake. This is pretty crazy stuff. Maria, thank you yeah. so much for coming today. Uh, thank you for having me here. All right. All right. Cheers. Thank you.